fucking crazy, honestly. Uh, went to Cancun before uh, Raptor season. So it was nice just relaxing with my friends, family for a little bit. Then got some time in San Diego, which is always nice. Um, this is my home. And um, then I went to preseason with Tigres. So I did the whole preseason with them. Um, it was cool just to like kind of know in the background what was going on, but also like taking in every moment um, with my team. And then um, then I started getting serious with Chelsea. So then I had a play the last two years with, with Tigres against America, the champions versus champions. Um, I was able to perform well one last time with the with that jersey. And now I'm back in San Diego, just getting a little bit more rest for the next uh, preseason. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah, I guess, um, can you tell us a little bit about how the move came about? When did you realize Chelsea was interested in you? Um, I actually knew Chelsea was interested after my last season. So they reached out in December, I would say. Um, they're like, hey, we want you, come to the team. Um, for me, it was too quick of a turnaround. So I was like, I'm going to do one more season with Tigres and then um, we'll get back to you and see if you're still interested. Um, then it kind of picked up again in May, I would say. They reached out like, hey, what's Mia's plans? Like uh, to my agent and we we're like, hey, like she's, this is her dream club. Like, of course she's interested. Um, and that's kind of how it came up. So they started talking to me in December, but started up again in May. Brilliant. And I guess like the Golden Boot run, I guess that was probably the moment, right? That they that they sort of decided they they would start talking to you. Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. It was an incredible season with uh, Tigres that season. Can you tell me a bit about that season? Because your your record mm -hmm. was amazing. I think it's seventeen in seventeen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's yeah. what I read. Uh, can you tell me a bit about that season and and your goal scoring touch? Yeah. So I mean, I came in to Mexico in January. Um, it was hard. Uh, the language barrier, getting a new team, learning about everyone's personalities, um, trying to get, um, you know, used to them on the field. I had a different coach that first season, and he definitely challenged me um, in many different ways. So after that season, I was, like, very motivated to, you know, like, hey, like, I got a grip on what the style of play is like. I understand kind of, like, the level of play from the other teams, my team. So when we had a new coach, Carmelo Moscato, uh, for the – for the season and uh that started in July um she like really honed in on me and the team and just got us all together motivational very structured um it was the most structured coach I've ever been with so um that was cool to get that like piece of of football in my in my mind leading into a into every single game leading up to the season so I was very prepared I knew what the game plan was um going into my second season with Tigres I was more confident um I knew what to expect. So I think that flow, that natural flow of, you know, being comfortable just um, allowed me to be myself on the field. And I think it just took off game in, game, game out, um, growing more, um, knowing my teammates more. And I think that I was just, you know, in form. And I think it just showed in every single game um, in that in that season. Yeah, brilliant. And I guess like, you know, Chelsea would have come to you and they they knew a lot about your game. Was it shocking, like, you know, how much they knew or how much they were watching you? Um, can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's Chelsea. Like, I, I've i been supporting them since I was, I, like, eight years old. So um, they've always been my team. So the fact that they even, like, reached out to my agent was just, like, dreams come true. Like, how, how are they seeing me? Like, people have talked so much, like, bad stuff about going to Mexico. I wasn't going to get seen. Um, the level of play is like lower than every single other league. Um, so I had that going into, into uh, me going to Chelsea. So the fact that, I mean, a big team like Chelsea is watching the, watching the league in Mexico and watching myself and Tigres was just like kind of mind blowing. Um, it was so cool that, that they watched me because I think that um, those performances I had that season were like the best I've ever had. So yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, excellent. Oh, I didn't realize you supported Chelsea. Can you tell me how you came to support Chelsea? Yeah, so my brother, he was a big, like, soccer freak, always had EPL on when I was younger, like, yeah, since I was, like, seven years old. My brother was an Arsenal fan. My dad was a Liverpool fan, and I was the one rocking the blue in the house. So uh, whenever Chelsea came on, like, Hazard was, was my favorite player, um, Eden Hazard, since I was – at like eight years old, all the way growing up, just loved how he played. Um, Drugba, 
like David Louise. It was just, that was my team. And I've been supporting them since like that age. So it's been crazy. It must be a bit unbelievable to you that you might be playing at Stamford Bridge and uh, all that kind of thing. Yeah, it was it was crazy when I went over there for the first time and being in that stadium. I mean, it was just so surreal. Like, I just couldn't believe it, honestly. Had you been to a match before or was that your first time? I know you're from far away, so no. you never went. Yeah, that was my first time in London. So <laughs> it was pretty cool to go straight into Chelsea Stadium and seeing all the facilities and meeting the staff members. Like, it was just I, something I can't really explain, like, in words. It was just amazing. Can you tell me a bit as well about Emma Hayes? She's a legend in England. How mm -hmm. much of a role did she play in your move? Yeah, she played a, a big role. Um, I know now in professional soccer that a coach is everything. So I've had bad coaches. I've had good coaches. I know that they play an important role in developing players, um, the team synergy, uh, and how your team will perform. And clearly, like, Emma Hayes is the best in the game. She's created a, a team of champions, and that's – and that's what I talked to her about. Like we had a call um, for like 40 minutes just talking about the game and and how we see things. And and I think that we both are highly competitive. We want to be champions. Uh, we both want to create an environment that will push us to be our best. And I think um, just hearing her talk about the game was like very similar to how I see it. So I'm actually really excited to to get to training with her and just get all the little insights she can to help me become the best soccer player. What did she say about you and your game and, and why do you think she signed you? Yeah, she saw, um, she told me that she saw a player that's so versatile, you know, that's going to help the team grow. She said that the team wants her to bring in players that can compete, that aren't afraid to shine, that aren't afraid to make the environment better, not shy away from that. And I think she sees that in me, she saw my play, how strong I am on the uh, on the ball and my, my performances, um, how versatile I am. So I used to be a 10 as well. For the national team so I recently just turned into a nine so she sees the different qualities I can bring into the game I can check into the midfield I can play make I can use my speed I can use my strength to hold up the ball so I think there's many different aspects of my game that she can use in different positions so I think that that's something that she said as well as she can see me playing with Lauren James Sam Kerr and complimenting them and helping them improve so I think that um, that's something that I'm looking forward to as well. How important is it to join a club that can win the biggest trophies in, in the world? It's huge. It's what every every soccer player wants. Like, you want to be a champion. You want to be the best. So, um, you know, it's just I'm so honored to be now with the team and training with the best. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and you talk about the best. I think a lot of people think Sam Kerr is among the best. How do you find, uh, you know, going up, going up against her and also playing with her? Yeah, I mean, Sam Kerr is considered the best striker in the world. Um, so I think being around her is naturally going to make me 10 times the better the player, you know what I'm saying? So I'm really excited to get to know her. I heard she's very cool. Um, so I'm actually, yeah, I think it's more like I'm going to be a sponge to her, but also, you know, compete as well. That's like my nature, you know, always being the best player I can helping others as well, but like me doing that. So I think it should be interesting. I think it should be very fun, um, just learning from her, applying it to my game and seeing how that matches. Yeah, and I guess, like, I don't know if you noticed, but Lauren James has uh, had pretty much one of the best World Cup games, uh, you know, from an England player in recent history. Uh, everyone's uh, going mad about in the UK. Uh, what do you see in her game that, that will be fun to play, you know, alongside her? Yeah, I think um, she's, yeah, she's an amazing player as well. She's young, like me, um, very fun to watch, very technical. Um, her vision is one of the best. I think that that playing with her will help me as well, like as well. So I think, um, yeah, like any player on the team is going to help me. I can help them as well. And I guess you're coming into a club like, you know, Chelsea seems to have two players for each position at least. So how do you sort of see that competition for places and, and how are you going to sort of take on that challenge and, and, and things like that? Yeah, I think what Emma was saying is that you know, Sam Curley didn't have a backup. I mean, she, they had to play her a lot of a lot of minutes and she didn't really have another person to come in for her when she needed it. So I think the way that Emma Hay saw it was that, you know, in order for the team to, to be better, I need to be there. And I need to come in for Sam Kerr when Sam Kerr is, doesn't need to be in the game. So I think that that as well plays a big role in that. So I'm just about knowing my role. And, you know, first of all, getting settled into the team then competing, and then, you know, hopefully getting that starting spot. So I guess that's how I'm seeing it. 
Yeah, and I just want to throw back a little bit. You mentioned your family earlier. I, I want to find out how you got into playing football. Like, what what was it that got you into it when you were growing up in San Diego? Yeah, I mean, they they put me in when I was like four. So I mean, like they, you know, like every other parent puts their kids in sports. I just fell in love with soccer. I think it was just kind of meant to be at that age, and they kind of kept playing it, kept getting more in love with it. And then I had a coach um, from U8 through, I think, U12, who just focused on skills, focused on us having fun. He didn't care about winning. He didn't care about us running. Like, he literally just threw us out there. He's like, I want to see as many scissors as possible. I want to see you guys nutmeg as many players as possible. And I think that was the moment that I fell in love with the game. I'm just having fun because I know that some coaches were the complete opposite. Like, all they cared about was winning and, you know, very tactical I think that will always come later in the game. So I think that foundation of having fun and using skill and being technical played a big role in how um, I see the game. Yeah, I can see that. And, um, you know, I also read about your uncles. What about them? They were footballers in Bermuda, right? Yeah. So my um, uncle's like a legend in indoor soccer um, for Bermuda. He also coaches Baltimore Blast indoor um, soccer professional team in Baltimore. And like all my cousins in Bermuda played soccer. I think that's where I kind of got it from. Um, but yeah, Bermuda is a, a big part of who I am, my family. And they're also like soccer freaks as well. Wow, that's crazy. So you must talk about soccer at home all the time when you were growing up as a little girl. Do you think that helped you as well? Yeah, I think honestly, just growing up and having fun was the biggest thing. I recently started talking to my uncle about soccer in like the past like two, three years. Because yeah, yeah, I just knew that if I was having fun, I was always playing my best. And it just started like coming up with questions about, you know, professional soccer and higher level of soccer, like national team and UCLA. So um, that's when I really started talking to my my uncles and my like my family about soccer. But like leading up, it was just me having fun doing what, what I do on the field. And I guess, you know, it's a bit unusual for people in the UK, but the university system's quite big there. So, you know, how important were those years? And and, and I was in um, recently in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they've got one of the best universities as well. So can you kind of explain how that sort of shaped you as well and, and ended up getting you into the professional side of the game? Yeah, I mean, NCAA soccer in the States is, like, crazy. Like, it's um, it's right after club. It's a huge thing going to your college, representing them. Um, and UCLA was was considered the best team as well. So I, I went there with Jesse Fleming, um, with Tegan Micaiah, um, Tegan Mackay, um, Ashley Sanchez. I mean, I was around like ballers my freshman year. So I already had like that hint of like brilliance, hit of talent uh, that I didn't see in the club level. I wasn't really used to. Um, I came in as like the best player coming out of my club. So it was cool being on other players around the world um, and the country to compete again. And I think that shaped me like, again, to the player who I am today, competing and training like with the best, playing against teams like Stanford who had Katarina Macario and Sophia Smith. Like, it's just, um, it's a a league, I would say that um, that pushes you. And I think that me going to UCLA definitely shaped the player that I am. And can you tell me a bit about the um, USA setup? You've been in the camps with the senior team. You're being looked at. Um, can you tell me a bit about you know where you're at and your ambitions as well for the future? Yeah, um, I've been in the US system from U14. My first camp, I was playing up above my my age because they didn't have an age group for for my age. So I was going in with the U14s when I was 13 years old. I've been like in and out of camp throughout basically my whole life, my adolescent life. Um, then I went to, got, started getting serious U-17s with, you know, qualifiers, the U-17 World Cup. Um, and then, you know, U-20s all up to this point, got my first call up October 2020 with the full men's national team. So obviously it's an honor, it's a privilege to play for the U.S. I'm one of the best teams in the world. Um, and, you know, I just keep growing, I keep developing until I get another opportunity with that team. Is that the highest level you've ever seen um, when you were called up to the national team in 2020? And, and who impressed you and who mentored you in that time? Yeah, it was definitely, it was weird because it was COVID. So everyone was, had their own rooms. Usually you have a, you know, a roommate so you can talk to, but we were separated, like masks, sat with the same people around the table. But 
Um, the level was definitely the highest I've ever played with. The uh, intensity, the competitiveness was something that um, I have never seen uh, in my career so far. Um, playing with like Crystal Dunn, um, playing with, you know, Lindsey Horan was something that was just like, you know, crazy. Like they're just very technical, very serious um, environment. Um, you can like feel the pressure, like the intensity, like throughout the whole camp, wherever you go with meals. Um, so no one really mentored me in a way because I mean, with COVID, like we couldn't really like communicate. Like it was just kind of soccer based, went to to meetings, you know, just focused on uh um what's it called? Focus on what the coach was talking about in camp. So no one really mentored me, but it was definitely an experience that I'm glad I have and have in the back of my pocket just in case I go again. So yeah, it was a cool experience. I guess like watching the World Cup now, it's something you dream of doing and, and maybe Chelsea can help you get there. Yeah, for sure. It's always a dream to play for your country. Um, definitely a dream to play in the World Cup and the Olympics. So it's something I definitely want to compete in. And I guess, um, you know, with the next generation, you know, I, I was in I was in the United States in New York when, you know, you, you guys brought the trophy home. There's a big parade. People mm -hmm. inspired. You know, is, do you think the next generation can, like you, can follow people, you know, like like all those greats that are currently playing in the team? Yeah, I think so. I think the game is changing. Um, watching the World Cup and seeing all these youngers, 18 year olds, um, like <laughs> hitting in game winners. It's just it's the game. The game's changing. Um, it's fun. It's energetic. And I'm excited for, you know, this new turn for the U.S. Um, and new players like Sophia Smith, Trinity Rodman. Um, it should be exciting to see, you know, how I fit in that if I get the opportunity to and just, you know, like you said, competing for for championships. Yeah, and the the, the men's uh, they're getting the they're getting the World Cup in the USA with the men as well. Do you think that soccer is just going from strength to strength, both in the women's and men's game over over here? Yeah, I think it's definitely you know getting close to you know equal. Like the viewership's going going crazy. There's more money being poured into female soccer. Definitely more people watching the women's game. It's exciting. Um, it, you just it's exciting to watch. I love watching it. I'm sure everyone does too. So I think that. The more people that get involved, you know, the higher that we're going to go. You mentioned your idols. So you mentioned Hazard as one of your idols when you were growing up, when you are talking about Chelsea. You know, what was it about him that inspired you? And, and was there other players as well that you sort of like tried to copy as a girl? Yeah, I think I loved Hazard because I thought he was the best player on Chelsea. And that's my favorite team. I just loved, you know, his style, his um, 1v1s. He just was fearless. I just I just saw that when he put his head down, you know, you knew he was going to beat the player. Um, and get the cross in and, and banging goals that that were crucial for the team. Um, I also liked Ronaldinho because of his skills. Uh, that's like me growing up. That's all I learned. But like like my coach just wanted me to not make as many players, duke as many players out. So I definitely you know saw similarities in him in my game as well. But I think you know growing up, I never really had an idol. A lot of people ask me this question, and I would say like I never really looked up to anyone. Like I, I just I just saw myself and I wanted to be the best player that I could. And I think that like, I'm different from, from every player that I've seen. So I think that um, that's helped shape me who I am. I feel like, cause I just feel like there's no one else like me. And um, I didn't really have anyone like that. I saw like, Ooh, like I want to be like her or him. Like I never really had that growing up. Yeah. You were, you were just saying, you know, you didn't see, see a player like you, you know, you feel like you've got your own identity as a player. Can you, Describe that identity, what are your values and style and, and contributions on the pitch? Yeah, I think um, I think my plays are so versatile. Um, like I said, like I'm able to read what the game is asking for. Not every game is the same. You can't do the same thing because, uh, first of all, teams are scouting you. Like they can read you. They can close pockets that you're used to being to, to going to. Um, I'm strong. Um, I'm quick, and I think that my awareness on the field is is what separates me. I think. I think that when you say versatility um, is is a key part of you. I think Emma's going to love that. Um, mm. I guess the last question is just simply: Are you going to get your family to change clubs now? Now that now that <laughs> you're at Chelsea, is this not the time to make them change? <laughs> oh, for sure. I already told them that they're only Chelsea fans now. And they're like, okay, I guess we can be Chelsea fans now. So, yeah, definitely turn them.
He won in the end, eh? He won in the end. Well done. I won in the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I really appreciate that. And it's been a real pleasure getting to know you and uh, have all this time to speak to you. So thanks to both of you, especially you, Mia.